teachers. I like it. You can tell that Pavel's back in town because yeah, he's can warming tell. the ground. <laughs> you can tell. This is what your classroom's like in the morning? Absolutely. <laughs> what, what, what grade do you teach? Sixth grade science. Oof. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about what it's like, probably. <laughs> yeah. So, for the community segment this week on the podcast, um, we're featuring a topic that's very near and dear to my heart is education. I actually used to be a teacher, so this means a lot to me. Um, we're actually very lucky enough to have two people from Teach for America here today. We have Victor Wakefield, who is the uh, the regional executive director for the Las Vegas Teach for America. Uh, sorry, in Nevada, right? Yep. And we also have Cassandra um, Behay Taina, and Good she's job. known as Miss <laughs> <laughs> Miss BT. <laughs> Miss BT right. for sure. I did have to rehearse that one, and uh, you're actually one of the teachers. So oh. I'm going to start with Victor, and I'm going to ask you what Teach for America is all about for those who haven't heard of the initiative. Thanks for having us. Big fan of the podcast. Um, so Teach for America is a national nonprofit, and we partner with communities to close the educational opportunity gap. So what that means is the difference in educational outcomes and opportunities for kids in poverty versus their more affluent peers. Um, if you look just north or east of where we're sitting today, um, or in some of the neighborhoods around downtown, um, kids um, have about an 8% likelihood of graduating from college by wow. the age of 24. And that compares to an 80% chance if you go wow. to Summerlin or Henderson or some of the upper um, income quartile communities. That's an incredible stat right there. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with the potential of kids, right? And everything to do with the educational system and opportunities that we give, give to them. And so at Teach for America, we recruit, select, and train um, high potential leaders to teach for at least two years in at-risk schools, um, and then cultivate our alumni to um, become like lifelong leaders and help to um, improve the education system at large. This so. is such a fabulous initiative. I'm sure that you've already been able to see the impact that you're having on our local community as well, right? Yeah, so, um, and I want to start with a huge shout out actually, because of some of the vision and generosity of the Downtown Project, they've actually helped us to grow the program. And so mm -hmm. um, today yeah. there's a 270 first and second year core members, uh, awesome. teachers. Um, um, and we look at our impact in a few ways. I'll frame it up and then I'll actually pass it over to one of our second year teachers, Ms. BT. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we think about, you know, um, filling critical need areas. So we bring a lot of science teachers, special education mm. teachers to the community. Um, we think about the impact on students to ensure that our teachers are having a positive impact. And the leadership of our alumni starting um, innovative programs and nonprofits. We have policymakers on the state board, school leaders, um, and then also just our um, presence as a community partner as well. Um, but I think the best way to learn about our program is to actually hear from one of our teachers. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so you teach at Monaco Middle School, right? Yeah, Monaco you... is, um, oh, sorry. Well, Monaco is at uh, in East Las Vegas. We're on the Nellis Air Base. And we're really proud of our mariachi group. Um, we're known all throughout the district for it. We've got a garden. Um, there's a lot of progressive things happening at our school. Um, but we are facing some challenges at our school as well. Um, majority of our students are Hispanic. A lot of them are English language learners, and so they, they face obvious challenges with reading and, and comprehension. Um, specifically for me, in sixth grade science, you know, I'm met with students each year who are wonderfully sweet kids, um, but they have not learned anything in science um, when they walk into my classroom. You know, in elementary, there's a huge emphasis in math and, and reading, as there should be, um, but it means they're given maybe 20 minutes a day to teach science, and so maybe it's happening, maybe it's not. Right. Um, wow. And so as a result, a lot of my kids come in with very little prior knowledge of foundational science skills. Do you have any good examples of when a kid came into your classroom and really fell in love with science? Yeah, uh, two kids in particular, two boys. Um, I won't shout them out, but uh, <laughs> they came in. So I don't let them know. I'm, like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a nerd. And don't let them know. They'll find the podcast in middle school. Yeah, so they'll find them out. Right. Um, but they came in with either no interest in science or very little knowledge of science. Um, and then now they just love to tell me about things that they're doing at home, or they'll see something that we learned in science um, actually unfold in real life. Um, or they want to take something that we're doing and enrich it and make it um, something that they're doing at home. So everything from taking bacteria samples in their bathroom, um, <laughs> like gelatin or um, extracting DNA from strawberries. Oh. Um, so I, I, never got, yeah, yeah, no. I never got to do that. That's yeah, really awesome. Strawberry DNA in there, yeah. frog DNA in there. Yeah. It must be so much fun to teach because like, I think about kids missing out on science and I feel like that's the cool subject that everyone looks forward to, like not maths or English, right? Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Once they actually get to do something hands-on, they yeah. see it's really exciting. That's super awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences. Well, thank you. It's really thank cool. Yeah. Awesome. So 
you're kind of looking for more awesome people like Cassandra, but you also have a couple of other things you want to call out about. I do. America, right? I, have, I have two fun announcements I'd like to share. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we are in a uh, process of moving our regional office to downtown, to 71 Bridger. So I'm really excited oh, to yeah. see the, the energy. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so with that, we'll see you know um, teachers, um, students, parents, all even more connected, I think, to the opportunities that are um, that are coming through downtown. Um, we're also going to do a monthly education discussion series that'll be open to the community at large, so that way we're contributing beyond just our, our program. Very cool. Um, and then we also landed a national um, educators conference, so all alumni across the country of Teach for America, twenty-eight thousand, have been invited to Las Vegas this summer to join us for the heat. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, we expect there about, to share it. Well, about twelve hundred to. <laughs> come and actually um, engage around professional development and get re-inspired and oh, there's a fabulous. big um, event at the Smith Center for that and then and then I would be remiss to, to not point out too that we always are looking for mentors and volunteers um, I, I hear that you signed up somebody to come to your classroom yes, already I've uh, got from some good scientists Island. coming Excellent. Yeah. So anybody from the tech scene or from the you know that can that wants to interact with kids, um, I know we'll share our Twitter handle and our yeah, email address, yeah. and would love to get well, anybody. Why don't you engaged. share that now? So like, how can people get in touch if they want to be part of this? Yep. Yeah, so um, our teachforamerica.org is a website. We have a regional landing page for Las Vegas. We also have a, a Twitter handle for mm -hmm. the region. TFA LVV for the Las Vegas Valley um, is our Twitter handle. So Easy hit to us remember. up there. Yeah. Cool. Thanks Thank you so anybody much. Anybody in the audience good at teaching? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Right here. Yeah. We're yeah. Up. So before we we finish up, we're going to very quickly ask you to pick out the fortune oh, of right. the week. Oh wow. So wondering if we can bring in our fortunes. What an honor. This is why I accepted the invitation. <laughs> of course. Yeah. It's all about the fortune cookie. Uh, and fortune, we'll get our get fortune it, cookie handler to come out, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Magical bubbles, right? <laughs> Science at work, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how's that thing make bubbles? It looks just like a stick to me. Excellent. Stick in water. Thank you very much, Denise. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much to Cassandra and, and uh, sorry, Victor, for coming out tonight. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I just told Sean to close his ThinkPad. He didn't see this coming. <laughs> I, I absolutely did not. So, so Sean, Sean is being kind enough to be voluntold to start our, our fortune cookie um, trail throughout the audience. So I'm going to explain the rules really quickly to you. Are you familiar with the, the game Telephone? Yes. Okay, so this is just a slightly more complex version of Telephone, okay? So I'm going to get it to you to do is to open this fortune cookie right now. That was good. And take take the fortune out, but don't show me and don't tell anybody yet. Okay. Do you have you memorized it? Yes. Okay, I'll get you to pass it back to me. You can eat the cookie if you want. Yeah. <laughs> next I'm gonna get you to take this flag and you're gonna whisper it to the person next to you and hand them the flag. And then that person's going to whisper it to the next person and hand them the flag. And what we're going to do is we're going to do like a snake, right? Like a snake on a Nokia game. And we're going to go all the way around till it ends up at that corner over there. Do you think you can do that? I, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we'll come back to this later.
guys will enjoy my interview with this former professional poker player. A professional? <laughs> professional. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, I just want to make sure that was right. <laughs> uh, he was also a teacher. He is the co-founder of a brand new flower shop, which I am excited to talk about, named Bud and Vine. And he helped lead the entire Holacracy rollout at Zappos, which is the biggest rollout ever. So put your hands together for John Bunch. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're the man. All right. So what's Holacracy? Well, it's very difficult to describe, but essentially what it is, um, is trying to uh, organize companies uh, really like cities are, are, are organized. So when you think about cities, nobody's going around telling people what to do. Um, people naturally find opportunities and seek to, uh, seek to act on those opportunities. Um, research has shown that when the, as the size of a city doubles, productivity per resident increases by 15%. Um, but actually, as companies double in size, the exact opposite happens. Okay. So why is that, right? Bureaucracy, right? Oh, yes. I mean, the I red, think we the all red know. Tape it. Is holding yeah, them the all red. Back. That's yeah. right. That's right. Um, so if we can break that down, and we can allow people to really work on what they're passionate about and really uh, seek out opportunities, um, we feel that companies will actually become more productive as they grow in size, which is the opposite of the trend that we have right now. So what Holacracy really uh, looks to do is empower people to do that through self-organization. So um, through allowing them to see opportunity and do something about it and organize their teams um, based on opportunities that they sense, not based on a job description or based on a manager okay. hierarchy. Just giving them power in their own little that's vertical right. kind of? Yep. Okay, so is it something that's good for startups? And if so, uh, why? Um, so I think one of the things that Holacracy does that is actually very beneficial for startups is um, it allows, the, the question of organization is, what would you do with your company if you had unlimited time and unlimited resources? Wow. Um, and that's one of the Fun inherent... Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the inherent questions in Holacracy. Um, and for a startup, what that allows you to do is really dream big. Like, you may only have four people, right? But what would you do if you had 100 people, right? right. And it allows you to think about that and organize your company as if you had this this big company feel, okay. right? And you had all these resources. Now, there's a second question of what do you prioritize? And there are kind of systems cool. for how to do that. I didn't ask that one, though. That one sounds tough. <laughs> what do you prioritize? Yeah. Well, and that's, that's actually a very difficult decision. But I think one of the benefits for startups is that it allows you to think about, dream big, and think about how would you set up your organization if you had unlimited resources? And then it gets really clear on what should you be prioritizing? Right, right. Uh, and and allows you to make those so, decisions. So, so you separately. can kind of filter your day to day activity, I guess, into what you could see the company becoming, and that just helps, like, not waste as much time, right? Exactly, exactly. So I think okay. in startups, and I've been in one in the past. Yeah. Um, you get caught up in 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 really having challenges of what is important right now, right? And there are all of these ideas flying, and sometimes they kind of go in in a bunch of different directions, and there's no real um, there's no real structure to figuring out what should we be, what should we pr be pursuing. And I think one of the, the um, advantages of Holacracy for a startup would be um, that there's a specific intent and focus on what should we be prioritizing our time on right now. Gotcha. And, and, and I know this concept is very difficult to understand and it's kind of amorphous, but, yeah. um, but there are some definite benefits for a startup. Okay, and how many people downtown are you? Like, what's the, what's the layout look like as far as beyond Zappos for downtown and Holacracy right now? Uh, so downtown project is also um, running on Holacracy. Um, I think yeah. you had Brian on a couple. Yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah. We Brian. had a, yeah we had him run a meeting with Batman and his super villains. It was good. <laughs> it's good. So Brian is the finally founder. they could finally get Batman if they had Holacracy. Yeah. You know? um, Batman is the er, Batman is the founder of Holacracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, I'm in, I'm in. yeah. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, Brian is the founder of Holacracy. Um, and so Downtown Project is running uh, on Holacracy how right now. How many employees is that total? In, What's that? At Downtown Project, how many employees are there? Oh, I don't oh, yeah, even okay. know. Uh, 150 maybe? Okay. Uh, that's plus or minus 150. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, also some of the Downtown Project related companies, I think you had Fred on from MoveLine. Mm -hmm. um, they're using Holacracy. Um, so Catalyst, there's a number of companies around um, Project 100. There's a lot of companies around Downtown Project that are using Holacracy, which is really interesting because we have a, a shared vocabulary around oh, right, um, right, right. 
around what it means to run an organization and, and how we do that. Um, so it's really cool. There's actually a summit um, next Monday and Tuesday all about Holacracy with um, some of these downtown project related companies and companies throughout, um, throughout the nation that are running with Holacracy. So um, it's really interesting to have a community that's focused around a, a similar organizational structure. Yeah, it actually, it is really neat. And um, any trouble set, uh, scaling it at Zappos or is it, is it scaling up that big? Well, uh, Zappos is the largest company to run with Holacracy at this point. Um, the previous biggest was around 350 people, and okay. uh, we're at around yeah, 1,500 went people. Way bigger than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so definitely there's, um, there's some issues, some, some new challenges that we're facing um, at Zappos with, with Holacracy. Um, some of them are, how do you break down um, and change some of the systems that are um, inherently in place at a large company. So things that you don't necessarily have to worry about at a startup, things like uh, progression and performance evaluation. And, and some of these things that you really have to have for a large company, but at a small company, at a startup, yeah, you just that, for, yeah. that doesn't even matter, right? Yeah. Um, so we are having to tackle some of those issues for um, a lot of times yeah. the first time um, when figuring it out for Zappos. It's cool. Yeah. All right, so you're a big flower fan, I heard. Well, so yeah, you're the co you're the co-founder of a new flower shop. Are yes. you are you into flowers? Like you you can like I mean I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean like you can like that's a type and that's another type. I know not that much about flowers, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I did have a passion for starting a small business, and I never really knew what it was going to be. Um, and I wanted to start a small business in downtown Las Vegas, and I and I was just kind of thinking about what was really needed in the area, and trying to cross that with the friends that I had or the business acquaintances acquaintances that I had yeah. that I thought would be really good runners of. Um, owners of a shop and that kind of crossed in a flower shop for me my um, uh, co-founder Christina uh, has a lot of uh, history and passion more importantly um, with flowers and so we're really excited to bring the flower yeah. shop bud and vine to yeah uh, I'm excited to Las Vegas okay, and where can we expect to to shop for these flowers at? Um, so it'll be uh, just a couple of doors south of La Camina for people who are familiar okay. with the area. Um, it's actually in an La old fans. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually in an old renovated um, uh, hotel building. Um, uh, yeah. And there's going to be a number of other shops there, like a juice bar, a donut shop, um, a sushi restaurant. Um, so we're really excited to be there. And we're really excited to bring kind of a different slant on flower shops uh, to downtown yeah. Vegas. We're going to be doing, um, have you been to any of these places where you can like drink wine and paint? Oh, like, no, that sounds fun. Though. Yeah. I'd be down. Um, so that's kind of a new trend that we're looking to bring into uh, kind of the flower industry where you'll actually be able to come in, pick out flowers by the stem, and put together arrangements right there in the shop. So and not drink, a, And drink wine? Uh, hopefully, working okay. with the city for licensing on that one. But. Get, him, get him drunk and selling flowers? Like, I am down yeah. with that business model. Um, so we're, we're, <laughs> we're excited about that and, and to see how that works out. That's awesome. Okay, so can, hey, can you go back one slide? Because we, we have a photo of your new room, this tiki room. Uh, this yes. is out of control. Tell us about how you, you use ladies all the time and like this crazy tiki vibe. So tell us about this. Um, so I live in the Gold Spike, which is just uh, just down the street. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to do something a little bit different with my uh, with my room. Right. Um, and so it's I had a this tiny room too. It's not yeah, very it's big. Like... It's uh, probably one eighth the size of this room. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different, uh, and I ended up landing on uh, tiki room. Um, after <laughs> some of my friends warned me against it, but I just went with right, it anyway. That's when you got to go yeah, strongest, right? That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, I was a little bit inspired by Frankie's, which is a, a downtown uh, haunt uh, tiki room here in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, and so I decided I wanted to make my room into a tiki room. Okay, I could I could buy that. And how'd it go? Was it easy to find this thing? Well. I don't know, what would you do if you wanted to make your room into a tiki room? Where would you go and look? Oh, the roles are reversed, huh? Um, <laughs> I, 
God, I don't really know. Uh, yeah, Party America maybe? Maybe just Amazon? Yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to maybe put together all of that stuff. Who knows? So yeah. for me, I think the natural place to look if you need something a little bit strange, a little bit weird, is Craigslist. Craigslist. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Um, Tell me where this story goes. <laughs> Who owned this tiki room before you? Um, so Some nutcase? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry. He could, uh, that's <laughs> not saying uh, you're in debt. Because eventually uh, when you sell it, you might yeah. be. Yeah, I don't, that's not. <laughs> yeah. So um, I looked on Craigslist um, and I was looking for various tiki things. Yeah. Uh, I just searched for tiki um, and I found a, a few various tiki items here and there. Um, and then eventually I came across a post that said tiki room. Take the was, whole thing. And I was like, well, that's pretty much exactly what I want. <laughs> so. Um, called the guy up. Uh, he's like, he seemed pretty excited to have me come out and check it out. And long story short, uh, pretty much 24 hours from then, I had a fully had established room. tiki yeah. room <laughs> in my in my place at Gold Spike. So um, we have Tiki Tuesday. Uh, audience members come by and check it out. Oh really? Oh, I yeah. didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put the plug um, in there. It's good. So yeah. <laughs> tiki, okay, Tiki Tuesdays, just all day. You can hang out in your room. Uh, only on Tuesdays, but okay. yes. <laughs> So I don't know. Um, I got to deal with them on Thursdays. It's Hawaiian shirts are a must. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, great. What were you doing here? Just uh, that was in the glow room at Gold Spike. I don't yeah. know if you've seen that, but uh, there's a like a 3D glow room at Gold Spike. So that yeah. was during the launch. This uh, this just comes up when you Google your name. So I did that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's just like a horse with a pizza or something. That's actually <laughs> or a little pony with a pizza. That's a that's a from. picture of me when I had more hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much uh, for coming out and talking to us. Thank, thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Uh. <laughs>
can't really understand the true culture and essence um, of a place and all the, the great places to eat and where to spend a perfect day. Right. So because of that, I decided to start Global Yodel, which is a website that um, looks at the world in an innovative and artful way. I like the innovative, speaking of which, April 13th happens to be International Creativity and Innovation Day. And you're all about that. What makes Global Yodel Innovative. So Global Yodel is a platform for locals around the world to share the place they live. Um, and it's also a resource for anyone interested to get thousands of little windows into what life is like mm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, just by the way, everybody, uh, Global Yodel, try to say it two times fast, it's not easy. With me on the count of three. Here we go. Global Yodel. One, two, three. Global Yodel, Global Yodel. No, you can't do it. It's not possible. It's easy? Too easy. No. I want to hear you do it by yourself. Go. Global Yodel, Global Yodel. All right, that was good. That was good. All right. So, uh, Jesse, please uh, tell us, um, if we want to put up pictures on, on Global Yodel, what's the criteria, what's the process? Sure, it's, it's really easy. You just go to globalyodel.com and hit the contribute button. Um, from there, you can upload a photograph, a piece of design, or a video. And then we have um, some custom interview questions for you to answer that are specific to the place you live. Mm -hmm. I love it, and it's, I've been on the site, and it's truly like art. You, you, the pictures that you guys allow up on there are just, yeah. which April uh, 15th is World Art Day, which I think coincides well. I heard, heard someone go, Tss. <laughs> that was you? What's your name? <laughs> no, that's your name is no? These are, these are real holidays, and I'm serious about them, okay? But I still love you, it's okay, yes. Um, so, World Art Day, April 15th, it's not just tax day. Um, tell them, because you guys don't just allow any picture up on there. Yeah, so we, we want the website to be a place where you can come and get really inspired about the world. You know, the world's a beautiful place. There's so many amazing places and cultures around the world. So we try to uh, publish, like, really great, beautiful, inspiring photography. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you're doing something, he's doing something super cool just for us in downtown Vegas. And I think this is a great brainchild in form. Um, we would like to invite all of you locals who live here in downtown Las Vegas to submit a yodel um, to our website. Um, it's a great way to promote the city you live in. We don't have any yodels from Las Vegas, so I think it would be really cool. And we're going to publish the best ones um, over the next few weeks. And our favorite, we're going to, um, our favorite yodel will win a, a big, beautiful, limited edition print from the website. So. How awesome is that? That's really cool. Yes. So. You guys gotta help with that. We gotta, we gotta represent downtown Vegas on Global Yodel. We yes. Need, we, we need to be on there. Yes. Yes. Well, Jesse, thank you so much. Don't Thanks forget. For having me. Do the Global Yodel for this guy and happy holidays. <laughs> Hello again. I am here with Elise. And Elise is the end of the line for the downtown tech um, fortune of the week. So why don't you, without further ado, tell us what it is. Don't worry, you'll be young again in 35 years. <laughs> you know what? You guys, you guys got a few other words. You got again, and you got the number three, and you got the number five. So like, we kind of got halfway there. I'm gonna tell you what the actual fortune was. Um, the fortune was you will be hungry again in three to five hours. <laughs> you did pretty good. I would like to be that too. Yeah.